Good day everyone, we will be talking now about kinetics of cell growth in batch culture. So for the overview of this lesson, we will talk about microbial, uh, microbial growth patterns in a batch culture, the growth kinetics associated, of course, in batch culture. Uh, now, you would um, notice that we are in bacterial growth, we are looking at batch culture and not in continuous cultures. Uh, later, we will uh, explain that. Now, we also will talk about effects of environmental conditions on the growth and the models for predicting growth kinetics. Okay, growth patterns. So, let's look first at the patterns of microbial growth in the, and, of course, the kinetics associated with it in a batch culture. So, cell growth. When we talk about growth, we are talking about uh, the replication or end change in the size of the cells. So microorganisms can grow under a variety of conditions. So we have uh, we have to consider, of course, the physical conditions of the environment. Basically, this is the environmental conditions: temperature, the um, acidity, even the pH are considerations. Chemical, environmental conditions. So um, do they have unwanted byproducts? The pH also um, is a chemical um, condition. Uh, oxygen content, do we have uh, toxic substances present or not? And uh, last but not the least is the nutritional condition. How much, how many uh, nutrients or source of substrates are there or left in the cells? Can, do they have enough for uh, living and growth? Uh, when we look at them, or we can simplify <clears throat> the growth of cells such that uh, cells are autocatalytic. They are, when we say autocatalytic, they serve as the catalyst of themselves. When we say that, we can think of it as a simple chemical equations shown here. We have the substrate where and your um, catalysts are the cells itself. The substrates are used to produce products and more cells, hence the autocatalysis. They, they catalyze the creation of themselves. If we write them in a more mathematical form, this a chemical equation is the sum of all of the substrates. Because if you remember, uh, cells do not only live on glucose alone. So they can live on other sugar sources. They also need ammonia or nitrogen source. They also need oxygen for the aerobic organisms and other uh, micronutrients, sulfur, phosphate, etc. So, and of course, uh, in this uh, reaction, so we have the sum of the substrates so that if we have this one in a mathematical model, the totality of all of these nutrient needs of the cell, that is the summation of the S, plus X, where X is our cells, because they are the catalyst, to form the total number of products. The, the products, it can be the byproducts, it can be the actual products, for uh, products of metabolic pathways, and of course, production of more cells, where we have plus N, X. So this might be familiar to you. Here is the microbial growth. Um, the a quite familiar microbial growth curve. So in here you have the first of course the lag phase. You will see here uh, over a certain time period we have a, a logarithm of the uh, cell numbers in cells per ml. So uh, the y-axis is a logarithmic y-axis. So here we have, uh, first off, after inoculation, we have a, a short lag phase where there is no um, growth, there is no apparent growth. Basically, here is the period of adjustment for the cell. It follows immediately after inoculation, and this is where the cells adapt to the new environment. After that, there is an acceleration of growth where we enter now into an exponential phase. We call also this one the balanced growth phase, because balance, because this, we have observed that the growth of the cells during this phase is of the same rate. So you now have basically a, a, a linear, uh, a very linear equation there, or a very linear um, line or li linear curve. So here, the growth of uh, during the same rate. Uh, sorry, the growth. Uh, it, the, the, the cells grow at the same rate. Now, the accelerate, the lag and the exponential phase, or this part of these microbial growth, we call them the trophophase. This is also the phase where uh, the overruling metabolic pathways are all primary 
metabolism, basically the utilization of glucose to produce energy and um, all of the uh, metabolic uh, pathways necessary for living. And then, now that is, uh, we call this the trophic phase. The second phase, now after, basically there will come a time that because the, the cells are growing, because uh, continuously there will come a time that they will exhaust one or more of these of the nutrients in the growth media. So take note, it happens during batch fermentations, not in continuous or fed batch fermentations. Because in this in a batch fermentation, you have a limited a number of substrate, unlike in a continuous, there's a continuous addition of fresh substrate. So basically, uh, the condition there is in static in stasis. This is uh, the microbial growth that we have here is in batch. So we have now a, of course, there will come a time that the, the finite nutrients will be exhausted. The growth will be, uh, will decelerate. So there's a deceleration and it will now enter the stationary phase. In the stationary phase, this is uh, the period where uh, cells now start to compete against one another for the limited resources that they have, that are still available and some of them can also cannibalize one another uh, some of the cells will die and uh, the, the death or the, the material of the death the dead cells will be recycled by the still living organisms so they they do uh, it's basically a survival of the fetus in a in a sense this uh, this phase, and in, including the dead phase, we call this one the EDU phase. And this is where we observe some metab uh, the secondary metabolites to form. In, when we say secondary metabolites, these are examples of this one are antibiotics. Um, some toxins are, have all, are also being formed here. During the stationary phase and near the death phase, we will also observe mutations because of the accumulation of the waste product that are toxic to the cells most of them many of them will die and that is where the stationary will enter the death phase and in both of these phases um, the cells might mutate or will be mutating so from the original strain that you inoculated in the in the batch culture it would now be uh, they will uh, evolve They're, they will mutate into a not exactly evolve but they will mutate to var uh, a variety of strains the strains with which would be necessary for their survival. Uh, if you want, uh, if you are in a in the industry, and you want to maintain a culture that is, uh, for example, that culture that the specific strain is optimized for a certain product, you don't want your cells to mutate, or if it just so happens that uh, this is the time where. If you let it go forward to the dead phase, you will observe that the, the original thing that you have is no longer the same. Sometimes, um, develop uh, so in the research and development, or if you want to improve the strain, they will uh, purposefully allow the, the culture to enter this dead phase, uh, the stationary and the dead phase, in order to uh, produce continuous mutations on the cells and then pick a good uh, substrate. Or a, a good strain for that. Now, um, if you want to maintain the validity of the culture uh, before you reach the stationary or near the beginning of the stationary phase, you might want to um, re-inoculate or get samples of the cells and then re uh, inoculate them again into a fresh medium so as to preserve the original strain before you go to the the end of the stationary and towards the dead phases. So that those that is the times where uh, basically the, the, around the stationary phase, many things are happening depending on, on your research needs or your uh, production, uh, the needs for the production, you might want to utilize some of the conditions there. By the way, uh, when we talk about secondary metabolism in the EDU phase, uh, production of, my, of the vitamins and some uh, antibiotics happens only in the stationary phase. Therefore, you purposefully, manufacturers sometimes purposefully uh, allow the microorganisms to go into the stationary phase or they, they purposefully limit certain materials so that you would immediately go to the stationary phase in order to produce the needed antibiotic uh, and pharmaceutical products. 
Okay, so let's look here uh, at each individual phases. Actually, uh, I'll just reiterate what I have said before. So we have the lag phase. So lag phase that occurs immediately after inoculation, this is the period of adaptation to the new environment. In the lag phase, the length is strongly affected by the age of the inoculum. So if the inoculum is old, the, the lag phase is very long. What, what do you mean by a, an old inoculum? For example, you culture microorganisms and you harvested a concentrate of the cell. This, is, this will be used for inoculating a future, uh, a future batch fermentation. However, something happened. You, you are not able to immediately inoculate it to, a, it to that culture. You just store it in stasis in the refrigerator or in the freezer. So the length of time, the, the longer you store that inoculum, the, the, the longer the lag phase. In a more practical sense, you can observe that if you are incubating, you can observe that if you have an active, uh, the, the store of yeast, if it's old or nearing its expiration date, or even if you open it and then store it in the freeze because you haven't finished it all. That's, a, that's basically an old uh, yeast stored in the, the ref, even though it's not yet in the expiration date. But it has been open for quite some time. Sometimes uh, it, it doesn't really, uh, if you put it in your bread, your bread doesn't rise. Because uh, there's a possibility that, of first, most of them might have been dead by now. Second is that, Again, the lag phase is very long. So if, if you have a one hour time for rising the bread, you might want to consider it at uh, say two hours or three hours because you have to take into account a very long lag phase. Now in order of course to minimize the lag phase, your inoculum should be young and large. When we say large, you input a large amount of um, the cells initially to start your growth. So around 5 to 10 percent volume per volume, 5 percent of the volume of the whole fermentation batch. And then we also have considerations for dioxic growth. So in dioxic growth, we have more, uh, more than one carbon source that is um, actually we call it dye but it can mean two or more. Uh, it can be for example a glucose source and then we have galactose, we have lactose. So when you have uh, a combination of glucose, lactose, galactose in this, um, in this, uh, in your batch phase, you might want to, you would notice that uh, there are, for example, you have a, a step ladder like or a, uh, a stair like growth curve. That means you would have, for example, a lag phase, an exponential phase, and another lag phase, and then another exponential phase, depending on how many carbon sources you have. And this is because uh, of the order in which the organisms tend to prefer certain carbon sources. For instance, um, as by default, a microorganism, of course, prefer glucose uh, over any other carbon source. But when glucose is exhausted, they will turn to other carbon sources. For example, there is lactose there. So they will now... Uh, switch to lactose. Now, the switch, uh, the metabolic switch from the utilization of glucose to the utilization of lactose would take some time. Of course, there's a, another lag for that, and then they will now consume lactose until lactose is in turn exhausted. So, that is uh, the lag phases. Now, in the exponential growth, the exponential growth as a balanced growth can best be described by a mathematical equation. And this is your classical microbial growth equation, where x is the amount of microorganisms at a certain time t is equal to the initial concentration of the cells x sub o times the natural logarithm uh, raised to the uh, growth kinetics mu, growth constant mu. This is the net growth constant and times the time the time of the, um, how long the culture is. Uh, starting from, not the, lag the, the the inoculation, but starting from the start of the exponential phase. Because remember, you have the lag phase. You do not consider the lag phase there. When you say mu net, by the way, mu net is the net of the rate of growth and the uh, death constant. 
So when you say that contents is the the constant that is the rate where the cells die, because of course st cells still do die even in the exponential phase. It's just that uh, the amount of the death, uh, the cells dying is less compared to the amount of cells that is being uh, grown or generated. Therefore, um, mu g minus k d that is the net that is the one that is being observed in the actual microbial growth during the exponential phase. This one is best explained by the monod model, the monod kinetic model. We will be discussing that later in this uh, lecture. Okay, now after the exponential growth phase, you have the deceleration. Uh, the deceleration happens because of the depletion of one or more nutrients and or the accumulation of the toxic byproducts. There is now a shift in metabolism to increase the survival in a stressful environment. So the nutrients are depleted and you accumulate also, of course, toxic waste. And that is a, a, a classical example or a classical definition of a toxic or a stressful environment. And hence, it becomes now an unbalanced growth. Uh, if you look back at our model, the deceleration is where there is now, uh, from the linear curve, you now have uh, a curve curving into a, a less than linear or an almost stationary growth here. So this is unbalanced. It's not linear. Okay, and now we have the stationary phase. In the stationary phase, one or more of the following occurs. The total cell mass stay constant, but the viable cells decrease. We can observe that in such that when we look at spectrophotometric, uh, spectroscopic um, determination of uh, microbial uh, concentration, uh, there are many cells still living, but the cell, these cells, most of them are already dead or they are not, no longer viable. They, are, they can no longer... Uh, Reproduce. They are basically um, at the end of their lives or they're almost dying, death or dying cells. There's also cryptic growth. Cryptic growth is where cell lysis occurs, but the remaining cells grow on the lysis products because, of course, it's also nutrients. And then, uh, of course, secondary metabolite production is observed during this stationary phase. Now, the growth, uh, the growth constant now becomes zero. Because, of course, uh, this is where cells can no longer, uh, are no longer reproducing. Our equation now becomes x sub o, where s sub o, uh, x s sub s o, sorry, x sub s o is the cell concentration at the start of the stationary phase. And since mu g is now zero, we now have a kd. When we say KD, this is the death, uh, the, cons death, the death constant. We are actually entering now into the death phase here. So it, is, it follows or it's concurrent in the stationary phase. So the rate of death follows a first order kinetics where we have X sub S um, uh, times uh, natural logarithm raised to K uh, prime D times t so if the cells are is uh, are transferred in a fresh medium we are now uh we can reestablish uh, a new cell growth but otherwise it's not in here we will see uh variations now in the strain because mutations are happening now when we look at the yield going back as uh, this one when we look at the yield, uh, substrate in fermentation is consumed. What happens to the substrate during the fermentation? Now, uh, in terms of material, material um, transformation or material conversion, we have the substrate, the carbons, the hydrogens, the oxygens, and even the nitrogens in the substrate becomes part of the biomass, which are the, the generated cells, or uh, as extracellular products. Now, in terms of energy, the substrate, the energy from the substrate uh, now goes into the growth energy and the maintenance energy. Now, let's look at this calculation of the yield. Actually, this uh, follows back uh, on our material balance yield calculations. The growth yield on the substrate is the change in the amount of the cells per substrate. The growth yield on the oxygen is the change in the number of cells per change in the or con per consumption of oxygen. And of course, the product yield is the change in the number of products per uh, per change in the concentration of the substrate, per consumption of your substrate. 
but when which is actually similar to our material balance equations. Now, let's look at this uh, maintenance energy first. So, maintenance energy, or we can say here as the maintenance coefficient. The maintenance energy can be described as a maintenance coefficient. This describes the specific rate of substrate uptake for cellular maintenance, where m is our cellular maintenance coefficient. And this is equal to the change in the amount of substrate over time. Uh, for the maintenance, the subscript M uh, means that this is based on uh, the change in the substrate dedicated for the maintenance of the cell over the number of cells. Uh, cellular maintenance is the energy expenditure to repair damages of cellular component, transfer nutrients and products in and out of the cells for motility and osmotic adjustment. Basically, uh, if you uh, if you correlate this one, or if this is an analogy of your household budget, the maintenance coefficient is basically the the bills that you pay for maintaining your internet, for maintaining your water and electric bills. Basically, maintenance of your um, household. And then we have next is microbial products. So in microbial products, we can classify them into two. First is the growth-associated products. We sometimes call them, in industrial microbiology, we call them the primary metabolites. These are the products produced simultaneously with microbial growth. And these products are, um, are always there in the cell. So example of them is the constitutive enzymes. So they are always there. They are necessary for the cells to, to grow, to basically to survive. And the product formation as a growth-associated uh, metabolite, the the specific rate for this um, like uh, growth-associated products QP is equal. Basically, it relates to the yield of the products for the cell times mu g. So in this equation, you will see now, uh, of course, the yield of the product per cell. But you ha now have another term here, mu g. This is the uh, kinetic growth rate constant. Be kinetic U, mu g is if you remember where did we find this one mu g is here the growth rate kinetics so this is the kinetic constant for microbial growth and this is also associated with the growth associated products because of course this one they are closely linked or tied up with the growth of the cells so the, the exponential growth of the cells uh, basically it follows or it has the same rate or similar rate as the or it is proportional. It is proportional to the growth rate of the cells. So the, the rate of the product formation of my growth-associated product is proportional to the growth rate of the cells. So if it's fast, it becomes fast. If it's slow, it becomes slow. And then we have this non-growth-associated products. So another term for this one are the secondary metabolites. These are the products produced during stationary phase. And... Uh, Many secondary metabolites, of course, fall under this category. Example of those are antibiotics, toxins, and most other pharmaceutical products. For their specific rate of product formation, they do not follow the growth curve. They actually have their own constant, which is uh, signified here as a beta. That is a constant value. They do not really care or they do not really follow uh, the growth rate of the cell. And then... Of course, there are exceptions that are neither uh, growth-associated nor non-growth-associated. We call them the mixed growth-associated products. So these products are produced during the deceleration and stationary phases. They can be uh, also other some other met secondary metabolites like the, like the products of lactic acid fermentation and santan gum. So as this mixed growth-associated product, it follows the, what you call the Ludeking Piray equation, where you have this uh, a value of alpha times the mu g. So it somewhat still follows your microbial growth, but with a constant b. So not not as well. Basically, they can start early or a, a bit later than the growth-associated product. So you have a shifting of your curve. Basically, a linear shift. Okay, so that is the the microbial growth microbial growth curve and the kinetics of this microbial growth in batch cultures.
we we, we see them in batch culture because in batch culture there is a finite amount of energy sorry finite amount of substrate and nutrients and so you it's much more uh the changes are much more dramatic there unlike in the continuous culture where it's basically a stasis Okay, so in the next part, we will be looking at the effects of environmental conditions on growth.